Here we have a vector question. This comes from 11.8. And this says a person walks home or leaves home and walks three miles west, then five miles southwest. And we're asked how far from home is she, which is also known as magnitude or distance. And the second part, what direction must she walk to head directly home? And we want to know degrees north of east. So if you think of a compass, here's north, here's east. And that happens to be the x and the y axis right there. How many degrees north of east? So it's not, uh, I'm not sure that the direction she'll need to walk is this way. However, the way we're going to measure it, we're measuring how many degrees north of east. So that's the typical way that we measure angles. And if that's not the direction that she needs to go, maybe she needs to go somewhere over here, we're still going to measure starting east and then how many degrees past east going around north first. So either way, the second part is the angle measured in the usual way. So all we need to do now is figure out what two vectors make this walk. And we're, the first one's super easy, three miles west. And we're going to draw a grid right here. So three miles west is very easy to graph out. So this right here will be three miles directly west. And we'll just shade this in so we know that the vector is going right here. I'm going to call it B1 for vector 1. And we see that it's going 3 to the left. So it's negative 3 in the x and 0 in the y. All right, the next vector, 5 miles southwest. So west is to the left, south is down. So we're supposed to go southwest. Now it doesn't say how far between south and west. So when that happens, it's going to be halfway between south and west. So it's going to go down to the left. And the only question is how far? It's supposed to go five units in this direction. So I'm going to draw out an incorrect distance here. This would be too far because you don't want to go over five and down five. You want to go five right here. So I'm not going to focus too much on exactly how long it is because I would need to very precisely measure it, but it's going to be something about this long. We could measure the angle right here, uh, but let's think about the polar form for vectors. So our vector two, it's going to have a magnitude. Let's call that, uh, we'll call it R for radius. And then the two components are going to be cosine theta comma sine theta. So we got our radius or our magnitude out front. We know that for r vector 2, that radius is going to be 5. And what about the angle? So I drew it out here. If we, we need to measure in quarters because we have pi over 4 right here. So we're going to go 4 pi over 4 to go directly west and then another pi over four. So that angle will be five pi over four. So what are these numbers right here? Well, the way I think about it, you're halfway between going to negative x and the negative y. So they're both gonna be negative. And when you're halfway between, that's 1 over square root 2. So that's our vector 2. And of course, you can distribute your 5 inside. This is scalar multiplication. So this is going to be negative 5 over square root 2, comma, negative 5 over square root 2. That's vector 2. And what we're going to do now is combine these two together so we're going to add the vectors to get the total uh, movement vector. All right, so 
v1 plus v2, we add those together. So it's negative three comma zero plus negative five over square root two comma negative five over square root two. You add the x's together. Don't really need to do any anything more than just write these two numbers next to each other because common denominator, we could do that, but they're gonna be ugly numbers no matter what. The y coordinate is just negative five over square root two. We'll call this just regular V right here. All right, what does this vector look like? Well, if we look at these two vectors added together, you add them head to, or yeah, head to toe or front to back. So I'll just draw a very quick diagram of what this is gonna look like. We got vector one goes directly left, vector two goes down and left. And then I'll switch over, we'll use black for the total. If I add these two vectors together, I get V, which is what we're looking at on the screen. So now to go home, let's switch to green. Now, if we did another V, we'd be going way further away from home. So that's obviously not back home. So what's back home going to be, do the opposite of V. So that'll be negative V is gonna be back home. So negative V is negative, what we see up there. You don't need to write all this out. I'm just being very explicit here. So distribute the negative sign in. And you have three plus five over root two and five over root two. All right, that's negative V. And let's give it a name, we'll call it V home. So this is the vector that we need to answer these questions up top. The two pieces we need are the magnitude and the angle. Let's start with the magnitude. That's gonna be easier to compute. So that's vertical bar V home. And that's gonna be square root A squared plus B squared. So that's square root. You do need parentheses. You can expand this out. Just make sure you FOIL it if you do. Uh, this answer, however, will probably be accepted. So I would just stick with this one right here. It's a little bit ugly. If you really want a number out of this, you can use a calculator and get a decimal approximation. Now we're gonna look at the angle. This particular vector, this V home, it's gonna look something like this. And this angle is gonna be in quadrant one. I better call it delta H for delta, or theta H for theta home. And this is in quadrant one. So everything's gonna be positive. And what that means, tangent of theta home is gonna be our uh, y over x, so it'll be b over a. If this vector was in over here in quadrant uh, two or three, I would have to add a pi to it, a half rotation, but I don't have to do that in this case. So we got tangent theta home is gonna be B over A, and that is, B is five over square root two divided by three plus five over square root two. You could leave it like this. There's a really easy move to get rid of some of these nasty fractions. If I multiply by a special version of one, which is square root two over two, what's gonna happen when I multiply this top square root two into the numerator, and the bottom square root two is gonna multiply into the entire denominator, what we get is five divided by three root two plus five. It's not necessary, but it'll save a lot of uh, typing later. We're almost done. 
you just have to move tangent to the other side. And you do that with inverse tangent. Tangent inverse five over three root two plus five. And that's pretty much it. Depending on what you're using, you might need to use the arc tan function if your calculator doesn't have tangent inverse. It's also known as arc tan. And that is going to be your home direction measured in the usual counterclockwise way from the positive x axis.